The St George Illawarra Dragons. Now, while other clubs like the Bulldogs and Rabbitohs can claim to be the family club, can any of them boast one set of brothers, two sets of twins, and a father-son duo as coach and halfback? Didn't think so. The joint venture emerged in 2023 to rival the West Tigers for the most times featured in the Daily Telegraph title. But with the hammer blow of Junior Armani's court verdict and not much of a recruitment drive, the Red V come into 2024 with an even higher mountain to climb. I will say this about the Dragons though, year after year everyone tips them to finish with a spoon, and they never do. They did go perilously close in 2023, but you'd think that for 2024 the introduction of a Premiership winning coach would be enough to see them avoid the bottom, right? I previewed the West Tigers in my last video, and a lot of the theme of it was hope, that there was genuine cause for optimism for West Tigers fans with the direction that they're heading both on and off the field. Now when I sat down to plan this video about the Dragons, I thought, that's not necessarily the same for this club. The only thing, in my opinion, that provides them that little glimmer of hope is the introduction of Shane Flanagan, a coach who is controversial for obvious reasons, who has only been an assistant coach in recent times, and ironically, who brought the one and only premiership to the Dragons' biggest rival, the Sharks. As I mentioned, there hasn't been a great recruitment drive for the Dragons this season, so for me, their biggest gain is Shane Flanagan's son, Kyle. The halfback was a gun coming through the Sharks system, rated very, very highly there, and played a fair few games for the Cronulla Sharks. And then became even more successful in his one season with the Sydney Roosters, taking them to a top four finish and filling the shoes of Cooper Kong reasonably well. But since then, in his time with the Bulldogs, his career has unfortunately gone south. He has struggled to maintain a first grade spot, and when he has had the seven jersey, people generally think has been mediocre. I do like Kyle Flanagan, I think if you partner him up in the house with the right kind of player, he can be effective. He's structured, he's steady, he can be the guy that guides the team around the field while his house partner is a bit more of an attacking weapon. Whether that dynamic works with a guy like Ben Hunt, I'm not entirely convinced, but the reality is the Dragons don't have any other options. And that's down to their biggest loss, Jaden Sullivan to the West Tigers, a guy who, as I mentioned yesterday, has been biding his time for years and years trying to get a first grade spot at the Dragons while his halves partner coming through the Dragons youth junior Amone has been in the 5'8th role. And when the Dragons finally give Sullivan permission to leave the club, the court case with Amone comes down and that jersey becomes vacant. I would have been a lot more confident in a Hunt Sullivan halves pairing than a Hunt Flanagan halves pairing. I just think they complement each other a bit more. Sullivan could be the young, energetic guy who runs around being creative while Hunt delivers the game plan. But the reality is, when Sullivan did move, it did look like the right decision, and he is almost guaranteed a starting spot with the West Tigers this year anyway. I do have a few talking points for the Dragons though, the first being. Is a Premiership winning coach enough to fix this? There aren't many Premiership winning coaches in the market considering the consecutive comments won by Ivan Cleary, the dominance of guys like Craig Bellamy, Trent Robinson and Wayne Bennett. Even for the likes of Ricky Stewart you have to go back to 2002. So for the Dragons to recruit a coach that does have somewhat recent Premiership success within the last decade, it is a strong recruitment. But the fact is that over the last few years, this has been a club in crisis. There have been off-field issues with several players. There was, of course, Barbecue Gate, the COVID breach where players came together and hosted a barbecue party together against uh, COVID guidelines. Not to mention the fact that star player and club captain Ben Hunt requested a release midway through last season and up until now has maintained the fact that he wants to leave the club. So as far as coaching jobs go, this is a monumental one and it takes the experience that a premiership winning coach provides in order to turn a club like this around. Whether Flanagan has still got it is up for debate and I guess we'll only really see when the season starts, but he has been an assistant at the Dragons before. He knows the club, he knew what he was getting in for, he had a comfortable job with Fox so he wasn't necessarily under any pressure to take a coaching role, so that's a good sign he genuinely feels that this is the right job for him, that he is the right man for the club and that they can have success together. I would encourage Dragons fans though, and the wider rugby league world in general, to just lower their expectations. As Flanagan has maintained in the media, the Dragons are not going to be contending this season. It's going to be a slow rebuild uh, if he does push them in the right direction. 
just because he is a Premiership winning coach does not mean that they're going to be immediately a final side. He still has one of the weaker rosters in the competition to work with, and to turn something like that around under the current salary cap is uh, uh, an undertaking that takes several years. One definite positive that Shane could bring though is my second talking point. Could this be exactly what Kyle Flanagan needs? As I mentioned, Kyle Flanagan has struggled for form in recent seasons, but you would think that the guy who would know how to get the best out of him would be his father. Shane will know what those strengths are and will build a game plan around them. And then there's the other side of that coin, which is if Kyle Flanagan doesn't succeed this season under his father, then when is he going to succeed? This could very much be last chance saloon for him. With his NRL career potentially on the line, we could see the best of Kyle Flanagan, and that is something that Dragons fans should be getting excited about. Kyle Flanagan is still only 25, so if it does work out for him at the Dragons and he does find his feet and find a home, the Dragons could have a half for five, six, seven years. But the pressure is well and truly on him now, and it's gonna be fascinating to see how he responds to it. Speaking of players under pressure, that brings me to my third talking point, which is, has Sloan had enough chances at fullback? Now, the important thing to remember about Tyrell Sloan, despite the fact that he has been around for quite a while, he is only 21 years old. He's definitely had a lot of chances at fullback, and I would argue has under-delivered. His strengths of his game are extremely strong, but he's got too many weaknesses, still a little rough around the edges at the moment. Personally, I would be playing him on the wing. There's a bit of a stigma about that, developing young fullbacks and the outside backs, but I really see no problem with it. You look at a guy like Roger Tuivasa-Shek, who is regarded as one of the best fullbacks of this generation. When he was Sloan's age now, he was playing on the wing for the Sydney Roosters. Being able to take a season or two out of the spotlight of that fullback jersey and sit on the wing, still have the same um, carries out of your own end, the same kick returns, but just learning your craft, getting the basics right, defending a little in the front line, getting some physicality before then moving towards fullback. It's a very conventional way for fullbacks to develop and Sloan has not had that opportunity. Then you've got a guy like Zach Lomax, who was given one game in round 1 2020 to prove that he was a fullback. One game. The reality of this Dragons roster, unfortunately, is that Zach Lomax is too gifted to be sitting out in the centres. He's got the ball playing ability, he's got the physicality, he's got the speed. I believe that the Dragons would be better off if they played Lomax at fullback. That's an opinion echoed by a lot of podcasters and other media personalities. So it's confusing as to why the coaches don't see that. It suggests that perhaps there is something more at play here. But on face value, he is too good a player to be sitting out in the outside backs in a lineup like this. Because I do believe that persisting with Sloan at fullback, given the media scrutiny that he's under and the pressure from the fans, is not the best way to develop him. I do not think that that is the best way to get Tyrell Sloan to the potential that we know he has. So then, this is the roster that I've gone with for the Dragons this season, their best 17. As you can see, as I mentioned, we've got Zach Lomax at fullback and Tyrell Sloan on the wing. I don't believe they should be swapping around, as some people have suggested. I just think with a squad like the Dragons, you have to have a solid game plan. Everyone has to know their role. And having stuff switching around like that, I, I just think it will lead to unnecessary complications. The other major thing to note here is the number 14 jersey, Jesse Marshke. Now I watched a fair bit of Marshke last year in the New South Wales Cup for the North Sydney Bears, and he was electric. Some of you may remember his brother Ben, who played for the Sydney Roosters when they were particularly hit by injury. But Jesse is versatile, he is a half, he can play hooker. I think you could even push him into the centres if need be. So for me, particularly given the lack of other options in the Dragons roster, he's the way to go. Now as I said earlier, every season people predict the Dragons for the spoon and it never happens, but I'm gonna do it again. I just, I look at the table, I look at the teams around them like the Tigers and the Bulldogs who I do expect to improve a little. I don't necessarily think the Dragons will be improving a great deal. Granted, with a guy like Shane Flanagan as head coach, you would think that they'd somehow be able to scrape a few results, but I just, I don't feel comfortable predicting anyone else to finish the spoon more than the dragon. So I will be predicting them to battle for the wooden spoon and likely finish with it. Sorry, Dragons fans, you are loyal, you do deserve more, but I had to pick someone in last and unfortunately it is you. 
But of course, let me know what your thoughts are on the Dragons this season. Is the duo of Shane and Carl Flanagan going to bring enough results to the club? And who would you have at fullback? Would you have Sloan? Would you have Lomax? Would you have potentially a mix of the two? Let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.